Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another book review. Recently, I read a very um, thought-provoking book called Save the Males, and it's by Kathleen Parker. And actually, this is a very recent book. This was written, actually published in 2008, and it really made me... Um, rethink my perspective on just uh, the way our society um, <clears throat> looks at the male population and it's like in this day and age women are more glorified than men are and um, it just seems that it's just so unfair to be honest with you because uh, I'm an egalitarian, and <laughs> all this time I, I thought I was a true feminist, but I guess I'm not, because uh, there can uh, uh, feminism had the right idea to begin with, but it just somewhere some uh, somehow down the line it just became so incongruous and just misunderstood, misconstrued that um, the male population has had to suffer due to it and a lot of uh, people look down on men and, and say well you're a bunch of uh, Neanderthals and, and that's really not true because um, I think the man of today's society is more well educated and um, more well read and just a uh, more in touch with what is going on in the world around him just just because of the advent of the internet we have such a vast knowledge at our fingertips it's just um uncanny but i think that everybody should read this book especially feminazis because it just it, it really puts things into a, a really good perspective and it doesn't take any qualms and it's it's not afraid Kathleen is not afraid of pulling out the punches and telling it like it is this is not a book that's sugar-coated and it's very direct in its language especially in one chapter where she warns her readers that the the language that they are about to encounter is explicit and um, I wasn't bothered by it at all I, I just I, I found it very intriguing and fascinating and just a uh, very um, interesting how we have demeaned our our males so much and and to be honest I, I hope I'm not one of those ladies that just say well men suck because it's it's not true they uh, men are very important to um, a well-balanced society and she has absolutely excellent uh, statistics here on how uh, populations without male uh, well families without real male role models they're more subject to um well if, if a girl doesn't have a of a, a male role model she's more likely to become promiscuous she is more likely to experience puberty early just because nature is no fool and um boys who don't have a male role model they may over identify with their mother too much and then it comes into the whole idea of uh, something that was frowned upon during my father's generation, which would be the 40s and the 50s, uh, coming into single motherhood or having child, uh, having a child out of wedlock. And you know, in this day and age, nobody really thinks about it. And we have the ability to create designer babies and all that. And as as someone who is, uh, I know this probably doesn't make a lot of sense, it probably makes you seem like a hypocrite, but I am, um, I am pro-life and I also support pro-choice um, just because I feel that the man and the woman should both have a uh, decision. I mean, the, the man should be informed as well because it's just as much his responsibility as the woman's is. I mean, it takes two halves to make a whole, after all. And uh, I can see her point in that, and I thought, you know, it's, it's really 
sad to say that uh, the woman gets all, all the chips handed to her because, well, she's the one that brings life into the world, technically. Yeah, she's the one that gives birth and goes through labor pains and all that. Uh, the man should be important, too, because it is his DNA as well. It's just as much as his child. And the same thing goes for adoption, and it goes into uh, the ethics behind that, and it's just really interesting. And uh, I finished it in a day. I just I could not put this book down. I was utterly riveted by it. It is only 200 pages, and then it has um, her footnotes, her um, references at the very. Oh, actually, these are notes. They're just footnotes, and it's all very <laughs> very very interesting and provocative uh, information here and just the what she calls the porning of America which I, I thought was very interesting because I, I do think that that plays a lot into it and I do think it's it's uh, you know it's something that um, I don't know what what brought it all about but I guess it it came about as sort of a, an escape mechanism for a lot of people especially guys and um, I'm not faulting it in any way shape or form I, I, I don't condone it because I think it demeans women but um, you know in other countries in Europe it's really not considered a bad thing because um, you know men should have an outlet and I th actually think this this is good to be honest with you I, I really do believe men should have an outlet to um, express their sexual frustrations and all that. Um, I, I just think, I, I'm hoping, uh, I really uh, agree with uh, Kathleen's assessment that there should be male role models in the world and uh, a family unit should be a family unit again. Uh, mom, dad, and I know it's not going to be white picket fences and a little dog and all that. That's, that's, you know, Stepford Wives version, and uh, no, that's not going to happen in this day's world, but men in this day and age are just so screwed up, and it's all because of uh, what feminists were trying to do. They, they thought they had the right idea, but in the end, they just, you know, they mucked it up for everybody, and it's just, um, it's sad, <laughs> and this book really made me realize that I'm, I'm not a, a true feminist at, at all. I am uh, I am in support of my male um, of my male cohorts, and uh, I often prefer the company of a man to a backbiting a catty woman because, uh, you know, no offense to my own sex, but there are women out there that just, ugh, just ugh, I want to strangle them because they're just they don't get it. They just don't understand. And they need to be more amenable and flexible and say, hey, this is just, uh, we are, <sighs> our brains are wired differently. So what? I mean, we're going to get along. I mean, our differences are what makes everything interesting, does it not? But it's just, uh, it's a very, very, um, outstanding book. It's really, um, extraordinary brain fodder just phenomenally written and very straightforward and blunt and uh, she calls a spade a black spade in this book and for anybody who's interested in it you can get it through Edward R. Hamilton and it's just, just a really uh, resplendent uh, half price books uh, vendor and their um, web address is excuse me www edward dot uh, www dot edward r hamilton dot com and they have just about everything there so um if you have a chance just trust me pick up this book and have people in your sociology class read this or uh, anthropo anthropology class could definitely uh, benefit from this because all science stems back to anthropology but um it's uh just really a <laughs> unbelievable book and I am so glad that I read it I just I picked it up and I couldn't put it down so I highly highly recommend it for anybody who is um, interested in um, just this socio-economical 
of state of affairs that our world is in and just how utterly screwed up we all are and hopefully the pendulum will go back any other way but I'm being an optimist so here's hoping <laughs>